Reverend Elvis Ajeman. There is something higher than this world. That is my soul. I won't trade my soul on the platform of covetousness, bitterness, and sin. I won't trade it. Our nation can be saved. Will we still watch people die like this? Will we still watch people walk into hell with pride? Ignorantly walking to hell, defending their journey to hell. How wicked can the church be? How evil can the church be? Where are the days of prayer and the days of fasting? When men will present themselves that God, if you are looking for a hand, this is a free hand. Are you looking for a voice? This is a free voice. Katrin Coleman will say that if you can do something with nothing, here is nothing standing before you. Let's start the journey. Let's start the journey. How will we explain it? When the people Jesus wanted us to save slipped through our heads. Because we were too busy with food. Too busy with offenses. Pastor did this to me. This brother did that to me. This one said this. This one said that. We are too busy defending our reputation. Not so different from the, the church of Sardis. You have reputation before the people. But you are dead. Are we ready to meet him? There is a revival that will bring the coming of the Lord Jesus. But my prayer is that we will pay our quota. May I not enter heaven as one that was no useful in the hands of my maker. May I not enter heaven as one God sent and never went. May I not enter heaven as one God commanded but was disobedient. Oh, King Agrippa, I was obedient to the heavenly vision. May I not protect my reputation so much that I give up on the greatest heartbeat of the Lord. May I not look for money too much that I forget the value of the souls of men. May I not go after my own will that I forget that there is a will of heaven that must be established. May I not be tired before my time. May I not live in the past and begin to say how powerful I was. But until my last breath, I will stand before the Lord that as long as I live, he will have a vessel. As long as I live. Have you seen my servant, Job? As long as God is concerned, he has one man he can boost off. Can God boost of us? Or you are waiting to be ordained? You are waiting to be ordained into an office before you please the Lord. It is too late, sir. It's too late. No matter what you have, without God, you are poor. That is why we preach to the poor. The poor is not the one without dollar. The poor is the one without God. That's why we preach to them. But the issue is that there are many poor people who still think they are rich. There are many poor people who still think they are fine. Jesus told the church of Spina, he said that you are poor, yet you are rich. 
and he said that they will, he said they will cast you into prison and that those in the synagogue of Satan will persecute you he said but if you will endure but he went to the church of Laodicea and said that you are neither hot nor cold you say to yourself that you are rich and you have goodies and you have fine raiment but you don't know that you are poor so there is one church he said you are poor but you are rich there's another church too he says you know you are rich but you are poor that means the church of spina was physically poor but spiritually they were still holding on to god and the church of laodicea which is the last dispensational church our kind of church the last dispensation is a church that can boast of riches but in the realm of the spirit we don't know god very wealthy people who have no fellowship with god all they do is to come and sit in church and and, and tell them how can i sponsor this and how can I sponsor this? But they go back and they are still into nightclubs and still into women and still into all kinds of things, having no business with God. They are rich physically, but spiritually. <laughs> Revival is when those that have gone far begin to see the desperate need of Jesus in their lives so that we don't have a plan B to life it is God or God our hearts are not shivering our faith is not wavering even if it doesn't help us we will still follow him even if you will not hear our prayers we will still follow him even if you will not let us drive what others drive we will still long for him because there is no life aside him when our eyes will be open that we will no more be challenged when apostle paul will stand and say what shall separate us for the love of god shall peril from our angel, angels and devils separate us from the love of god when we know and we know and it's not just a, a normal motivation but from the depth of your heart you know that you have one agenda on earth that you will live for him and you will please him like apostle paul who said for me to live is christ and for me to die is gain for whether i live or i die i live unto the lord for i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that liveth in me you look at me and i have nothing i value apart from this Jesus that rests in my heart that we can be like men like Polycarp who were to face the wrath of the empress and they said will you deny Jesus and he said that this is a great privilege for me that I have a chance to prove my love for Jesus he said why tell me say I should deny him and Polycarp was smiling whilst he was being put on a gallow to be bent for his faith in Jesus. We have men like Ignatius. Whilst he was facing the lions to be eaten up, this man was shouting, giving glory to the Lord that at long last I have had an opportunity to die like Paul died. These were men that walked the path of Matthias. Why? Because their heart longed for the Lord. My heart's long 